In the last video, we mainly focused on solving two-step equations, which gave us a really good primer into solving multi-step equations. Uh, as you can see with these particular examples, they don't really look like the last video in that we've got some parentheses, distributed property going on, we've got some constants, and we've got some coefficients that we want to get rid of. So these are a little bit more um, complicated, but nothing crazy. I'll show you guys how we go through them. So let's jump right into it. I look at this first one right here. Let me move some stuff over so we can actually see it and zoom in on it. So for this one, take a second and see if you can solve it. Uh, come to your conclusion, come to your answer, and then come back and we'll work through this one. Okay, hopefully you, you gave this one a shot even if you got the wrong answer. Again, not concerned about getting it right or wrong. In this case, I want you guys to learn and you learn by doing the best way. So with this one, it looks like, I, I will tell you just as the method, when we see a distributive property, what I like to do is kind of put, again, if you saw the last video, I put a lot of boxes around things. We'll put a box around that. We're gonna save that uh, for a little bit later. Anything that's not inside of that box, we want to get rid of. Now there will be examples in the future where we have multiple parentheses, multiple distributive properties, do the same thing. I see here outside of the box, there's a plus five. I wanna get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is subtract five from both sides. If you don't know why I'm subtracting, make sure you go back and are comfortable with um, how we actually solve equations, the two main rules for solving equations. In this video, I'm assuming you guys have seen that and are comfortable that we just do the opposite operation. So these will cancel out. This right here, we get a 26. Now we can come back and say, okay, we've got this over here. We rewrite, rewrite our new equation and from here, um, there's, there's a couple things that we can do for this. I do want to give you guys some practice with the distributive property. So here, remember, the distributive property multiplication just means that I see this two, that's being multiplied by this whole set of parentheses. What that means is everything inside that set of parentheses gets multiplied by the two. Okay, so you'll see me write this a lot. You've probably seen this in class, little arrows pointing to each term inside of the set of parentheses. Normally when we're starting, we'll only put two terms inside, but we can have multiple, or not multiple, we can have a lot more than two terms inside. Um, so if we do that, let's see what we get. Let me move down a little bit. Looks like we have two times x plus two times four. So it looks like we have two x plus eight equals 26. And if you look, this looks exactly like the problems that we were doing in the last video, two-step equations. Um, and if you can go from here, we just take that minus eight, 26 minus eight, we get 16. No, not 16, excuse me, 18. <laughs> we get 18 and then 18 equals two X because these cancel out right there. Okay, and then from here, again, you probably take a guess at what the X is, but that's not what we're trying to do when we solve these. We wanna actually solve them algebraically. So we get, it looks like X equals nine. Now. Always, 100% of the time, when you're solving these types of equations, go back and double check your answer. So we got, potentially, x equals nine. Now, for these ones that we're doing, we got a whole number there. Sometimes you'll get a fraction. Those obviously aren't as fun to go back and plug in, but make sure you do anyway, just to double check. It's the best way to see if you got the right answer. So if I plug in nine for x, it looks like we get uh, nine plus four, that's 13. 13 times two, that's 26. 26 plus five, that's 31. And this is a true statement. That's how we know that this answer that we got is correct. Okay, so very similar to what we did in the last video. The only extra thing that we really had was um, we have a little distributive property. And that's not the only way that we can solve distributive properties. Um, but for our purposes, I do want you to be comfortable breaking it up, um, just, just multiplying every term inside so we can get rid of that. So that's pretty much it for that. Let's try another one. Looks very similar to the last one. So go ahead and give this one a shot and then we'll come back and work through it. Okay, let's see what we have. Looks like the same exact thing. We wanna put a little little box around our distributive property around you know generally the set of parentheses with the coefficient in front of it and get rid of anything else that's not inside of that box. Now I see a minus 17, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Now let's rewrite everything. Looks like we have a 36 and we'll bring this down. Okay, so again, from here, if you one thing I do want you guys to know is um, we actually could divide by three here, 
but the explanation for why that is is a little bit beyond this particular video we're just going to whoops we're just going to um, distribute across but I do want you to know that it's not the only way that we can solve these algebra there's multiple ways we can solve things which can be both ni both nice and sometimes annoying <laughs> trying to figure out which one is the best way um, but let's just go ahead and distribute this so it looks like we have 3 times x minus 3 times 2 Okay, so we rewrote that, let's move it down a bit. And from here, again, if you notice, once we get rid of that distributive property for these problems, they start to look exactly like the two steps. So I see a minus six, I'm gonna get rid of that first. Equals three X. This one's not so obvious off the top of your head, but when we divide both sides by three, it looks like we get X equals 14. Now, again, let's go back and double check, double check, excuse me, let's see what we get. So if I plug in 14 for X, I get 14 minus two, that's 12. 12 times three is 36. 36 minus 17 is 19. And again, that's a nine. <laughs> we definitely get um, a true statement. That's how we know our answer, our variable is correct, okay? So let's try this last one. I'm gonna move this over a bit so we have some more space. Okay, so go ahead and give this one a shot. Notice it looks a little bit different than the other ones um, that we've worked on. I did that purposefully, not to try and trick you, but because not everything's gonna be on the left side all the time. So go ahead and try this one and we'll come back and work through it. Okay, let's see what we have. So there's, again, a couple ways we could have started this one. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do what we've been doing um, and put a box around this right here. So if you see, we've got a, a two here that we wanna get rid of. A normal two, um, some of you, I, I have had students where it's like, wait, what do we, there's, there's no plus, what, what do we do with that? That's a plus two, just because we don't have the plus in front of it doesn't mean it's not a positive two. So same thing, I'm gonna get rid of that by subtracting. That's a two by the way. Uh, let's see, we get 14. Now we can rewrite what we're left with over here. So here, um, again, what we can do, it looks exactly like the other problems. I've got a negative four now multiplying everything inside the parentheses. So I'm gonna rewrite the 14. We didn't touch that yet. We've got minus four X. Now be careful with this one, negative four times negative one. Double negatives give us a positive four. Um, and then again, from here, it looks exactly like a two step because it is a two step. So <laughs> what we do with this is um, we'll just get rid of that four. And it looks like now we have this. And I gave you this, uh, this one um, for a reason. Um, all the other problems that we've done, we got a nice whole number at the end. That's not always gonna be the case. Um, it's nice when we do get that, but a lot of times we'll, we'll end up with fractions. I want you to be comfortable with what we do with fraction answers. So it's tempting, it's really, really tempting if you were on a test or a quiz or a homework to leave it like that, but I'm sure many of you guys have probably gotten stuff off like I did back in the day for not simplifying your fractions. Always make sure make sure <laughs> that you simplify your fractions. So this, we can pull out a two from the top and the bottom, and it looks like we just get negative five halves. So like I was saying before, when we get a fraction answer, not very fun to go back and plug it in, but let's see what we get um, when we do. If we start at the very beginning. Um, we had negative five halves minus one, that's what, negative seven halves? So we have negative seven halves times negative four. Um, these actually cancel out, uh, the negatives do, and then four over two is just two. So this gives us a 14. And then we have two, so if I rewrite this, this is not a very good way for me to write this. this is pretty unorganized, <laughs> but I'm just kind of showing you how we do this. But this would give us a positive 14. And if you look, there was this two in the beginning, two with a plus 14, that's 16 that definitely equals 16. Now for these ones, um, you may or may not have a calculator on them. Again, I, I want you to be comfortable working with the fractions. You've been doing fractions for quite some time probably. Again, plugging them back in is not very nice, but I have a lot of students who they'll end up with a fraction answer and think, uh, did I get it? Is it right? Is it wrong? Um, because they're so used to seeing whole number answers and that's really because whoever's giving them practice only picks ones that have answers that are whole numbers and I'm guilty of that myself. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's it for this one. Negative five halves would be our answer for that. So 
for these ones, uh, our main, really what I should have put up here in the title was solving multi-step equations um, using with the distributive property. For our purposes now, again, I just want you to be comfortable with the distributive property, what we do, getting rid of that, and then noticing after we get rid of the distributive property, once we distribute, um, it starts to look like all the other equations that we've been doing, okay? And that's the point of this. So uh, hopefully this video helped you. In the next one, uh, we'll focus on variables on both sides. That's a big topic. Uh, all of these are you know, essential to algebra. Uh, algebra 2, you, you'll solve equations for the rest of your math life. So you want to make sure that you're comfortable solving these equations. Make sure you check in the description. I'll put a link, just like all the other videos, to um, some practice problems. It'll be a few practice problems. Work through those and the, the solutions will be there, but make sure you don't check those out until you've come to an answer. Even if you're stuck, make sure you work through it, even if you get the wrong answer, because that tells us that we're, we're making improvement. And I want you to know that's, that's how you improve, getting things wrong so that we can get them right. So um, take a look at that. That should be in the description. And uh, hopefully, again, this video helped you kind of, you know, explained all this fun stuff that we're doing with all these. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.